whenever we are using hooks for state management and honestly with react that's going to be across the board because you're either going to be using the built-in use state use reducer redux or some other state manager that is giving us this nice hook we need to be careful when reading values within callbacks in our function components in this tutorial we will take a look at what issue can happen within these callbacks how we can solve it for example when we are using the use state hook along with some guiding principles for us to use with third-party state managers along with a practical example so let's go Consider the simplest of React state managements. We are using react.useState to initialize a count state variable with a value of zero. We create a utility function which is going to get invoked when a particular button gets clicked. And this function is going to increment the value of count by one. Within the rendering of our component, we're going to have a simple display for the current count value in an H1 along with a button that is going to be wired to this onClick function. So as we click this button, the onClick method will increment the count by one. And indeed, if we jump into the UI and click the button three times, the count does increment thrice to go from zero to three. However, this particular onclick method has a bug just waiting to happen. To demonstrate that, let's just add a simple API call where we will save some information and invoke that before we increment the count in this onclick method. Now, what do you think is going to happen if I jump into the UI and click the button three times? You would expect the count to go to three, However, as you can see, it only gets incremented once. And the reason for that is that this particular onclick function captures the value of count at the time when this particular component gets rendered. So every time onclick gets called, if there is no re-render, then count is going to be zero and the set count is going to set it to one. And all three of the calls to onclick are essentially setting the count to one. The source of this issue is that whenever we use a hook, we have to be in the context of a React render which means that we do not get a new value unless there has been a re-rendering. Now useState has a neat solution for this. Instead of providing a new value to the set function, you can provide a method to schedule an update to happen. And within that update, you get passed the latest value of the state variable. And with this simple fix in place, as the onClick method gets called, we schedule three updates. And once the API call resolves, those scheduled updates happen in sequence always incrementing the previous value by one. I'd also like to give you one more additional best practice when working with useState is to have all of the mutations as close to the state variable as possible. So if you want this increment mutation, create a utility function that increments it by one, put it right next to the call to useState so that it is easy to review and less likely to contain mistakes. The same issue will exist whether you are using Redux, ZooStand or any other state manager where you are using a hook to load some value from an external store into the context of a React render. Now the solution that you will use will depend upon your particular state manager, but let's cover how I would do it elegantly within my current favorite state manager, which is Welshio. I do have a lesson dedicated to Welshio that I will leave in the video description, but fundamentally you create a store by using the proxy method and you use the store within your React render by using the use snapshot hook. Our store consists of a simple count value, which we initialize to zero, and a method called setCount which updates the count value. Now, as mentioned, we can use this store within our app component by using the use snapshot hook to get the snapshot for use within the React render. Just like before, we create the onClick method which is going to invoke setCount with the new count value which we will read from the snapshot. And then within the rendering of our component, we have the same UI with an H1 count and a button that invokes onClick. Now, just like the use state hook, this also works as long as the re-rendering happens before the next call to snapshot.setCount. However, if you introduce something asynchronous like a timeout or an API call, just like with setState, this allows us to invoke multiple on clicks, which only get access to a stale value of the snapshot because no re-rendering is going to happen while that API call is pending. And just like with setState, even though we click the button thrice, it only updates by one because they have all captured the value zero and incremented that to zero plus one. The fix with Belcho is actually quite easy. In any of the callbacks, instead of using the snapshot, you can actually use the state because the state is independent of the hooks and therefore independent of the last time that this particular React component was rendered. And with this fix in place, when we click the button three times, the changes cascade and increment the count by three, which is what we desired. What's really cool with Welshio is that it even comes with an ESN plugin that can detect this particular issue for you and recommend the correct solution. 
is maintained by the Welshio team and exists as ASLint plugin Welshio, which we can install as a simple dev dependency and even comes with the recommended defaults to add to our ESLint config. And one of the lint rules that this particular ESLint plugin comes with is one that makes sure that we do not read anything from the snapshot within a callback and it actually guides us to use the state instead. Now one more recommendation that I have for you which you can apply for Welchio as well as for other state managers is that for any mutation where you want to read a previous value, move that into its own particular action so that you don't have to read the value when you are trying to invoke that particular action. For example, we can create another method within this particular proxy called to increment that increments the state count by one and now we no longer need to read the previous value if we just want it incremented by one. And Welshio is so powerful that you can even take it one step further and completely get rid of this onclick method within the React render and then move it into your state so that it is all co-located and now our render function becomes even more simpler than before. And this particular state object can now actually be used with or without React and even can be tested with or without React. As always, thank you for joining me. Smash the like and share this video and I will see you in the next one.